evening of comedy featuring Joe Corcoran. How's that penguin doing in our bed? Hello. Oh, well, hello there. You sound like a terrific crowd. You look like a terrific crowd. I want to take a little poll here. Anybody here from the Midwest? Yeah. Me too. I grew up on a farm in Beverly Hills. I grew up on a farm in Minnesota. Yeah? Oh, Minnesota. <laughs> You're right. It's pretty cold back there. Well, I started doing impressions when I was about nine years old, and finally, about a week ago, I worked my way up to doing impressions of people. <laughs> this is great. You're still with me. It's, it's okay. I love a crowd with control. So, but my mother keeps saying to me, Joey, get yourself a real job. Next time, Tonto let me go to town and get my own mask. <laughs> I guess Mom was right, huh? My impression of a man who's half Jewish and half Australian. I'll let you think about it for a while. Oy vey, I hate it when it rains. I know you're sitting out there saying, what a low life, cheap prop humor, but it's a living and someone needs to do it. But please, sir, do not try these dangerous impressions at home of a professional, okay? Anybody go to a Catholic high school? Yeah? Me too, I went to good old St. Judas Stool Pigeon Catholic High. And, uh, we had a terrific baseball team because we had a terrific baseball coach, good old Sister Murray Knuckles Laguini. She used to do commercials for Happy Days and Skulls Chewing Tobacco. Not a pretty sight. Anybody spend any time in Vietnam? Me too. I'll wait for you. I don't want to screw up your timing, okay? <laughs> yeah, I spent two years in Vietnam as a decoy. Went to the University of Wisconsin on, uh, on the GI Bill and got a fine arts degree in food sculpturing. And for my final project, I made a life-size bust of Richard Nixon out of Spam, Velveeta cheese, and pimento beans. <laughs> You're right, not a pretty sight. Joined a touring theater company for a couple of summers doing kosher Shakespeare. And we did such things as Hamlet, Two Tailors from Verona, the Merchant of Venice Beach, and my favorite, Romeo and Juliet. And just because of that kind of reaction that I was forced to move here to Phoenix a couple of years ago. <laughs> I saw Bill Leverton on the Arizona road. Coupons, coupons, come on over. And my favorite people here in, uh, in Phoenix, the guys from Sonoita Motors. <laughs> Yeah, you know the guys, the guys who went to the Ollie McGraw School of Acting. Well, I saw these guys on TV and I said to myself, hey, show business is for me. A lot of people don't know this, but McDonald's and Atari got together, came up with a new video game. That's right, ladies and gentlemen, we now have Pac-Mac. <laughs> and now it's time for the Mr. Pac-Mac Show, brought to you by McDonald's and Atari. <laughs> wow, man, is this ever good stuff? My eyes are really dilated now. <laughs> new from Procter & Gamble, our new four-and-a-half-month deodorant pad. <laughs> Buff, Buff, how do you like my new fancy item suitcase? <laughs> Apparently you don't. Hello and good evening, sports fans. I'm a come sell here with my new broadcasting headphones for the narrow-minded. <laughs> oh, 
Okay, moving along in this carnival-like atmosphere, I'd like to do a song that's written by, believe it or not, Mel Tillis. You painted up your lips and rolled and curled your tinted hair. Ruby, are you contemplating going out somewhere? Shadows on the wall tell me that something must be said. I Ruby. What the hell's that penguin doing in our bed? <laughs> okay, I get your attention on that cheap stuff. Uh, that's right, it hurts. On the road again, just can't wait to get on the road again. I find love is bigger, here's a good my friends. I can't wait to get on the road again. He sings that way. That kind of hurts, you know? Ah, uh, come on. I'm not really Willie Nelson. My name's Johnny Cash. Um, um, um. Love to do that June taught me how. Um, you know, people are always coming up to me saying, Johnny, how come you sound so damn much like Mr. Ed? Um, Sue it! Yeah. Thank you. I've been goofing around here too much. I want to do something serious. If a face could launch a thousand ships, then yours could sink a fleet. <laughs> I think it's something genetic, I'm not quite sure. I don't <laughs> okay, I want to do a, I call it a funny, sad song, because I, um, I figured if this song was written today, it'd be just a little bit different, because kids are so precocious, and society's so permissive. My son arrived just the other day. He came to the wild in the usual way, but there were planes to catch and bills to pay. He learned to talk while I was away. <laughs> he was snorting before I knew it. He would say to me, I want to be like you, Dad. You know I want to be like you. And the brats in the cradle with the cocaine spoon. The little boy blew his eyes the moon. When's he coming down? I don't know when. But he's having a good time. It's gonna snow real soon, yeah. Thank you. This is one of my favorite things to do. Hey, thank you, Joey. Thank you very much. Hey, Dre, my name's Amos McCoy. You remember the real McCoys? Hey, Luke! The Luke, Katie, Pepino, and Hassey. Here all over at McMichael's right now, playing some checkies. And I like to do songs made popular by my very good close personal friend, A. Sammy Davis Jr. <laughs> you think about that one for a while, too. <laughs> hey, don't get me laughing, we'll be here all night. Hey, could I have a blue spotlight, please? Yeah, it's just about perfect. <laughs> well, I know, man, for Jangles. Any dance for you? worn out shoes. Silver hair and baggy pants and baggy shirt. Yeah, the old soft shoe. Well, he jumped so high. Yeah, he jumped so high. And yeah, then he lightly stepped down. I said, Mr. Bojangles. I said, Mr. Bojangles. Won't you please dance? Well, I'm going to go home right now and play some checkies and You've been terrific to me, so I want to leave you a little bit of advice that Jack Lemmon told me one time. And may the wind at your back and never be your own. You have to think about that one for a while, don't you? Confuses the hell out of Pepino, he keeps walking backwards. Hey, thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you.
Good evening, my name is Maxwell Smart. <laughs> and welcome to the new game show, Would You Believe It? Where famous people do things you wouldn't think they would do, like would you believe Jack Nicholson in charge of a daycare center? you little turds, get your crayons out. <laughs> I want all you tall tykes to go with the chief. He's going to teach you how to play basketball. <laughs> and you hyperactive turkettes, you're going to go with Nurse Ratchet. She'll calm you down. Well, thank you, Bill. Would you believe Sylvester the cat as a used car salesman? <laughs> Sylvester for Sonoida Motors, Subaru, Flight Station, Felicus, 76, 66, Saturday and Sunday only at Sonoida Motors, Fayabla, Espanol, thanks. I do this one, but would you believe Truman Capote <laughs> doing an impression of John Wayne? Okay, pilgrims, yo. <laughs> Please, Tonto, let me go to town and get my own mask. I've been real lucky the last couple of years as an actor. I did a Miller beer commercial and some things for Buick and Western Airlines. And about a year and a half ago, I did a, a movie down at Old Tucson called I Married White Earp with Marie Osmond and Bruce Boxleitner. I know six of you saw it. <laughs> but about a month ago, I, I had to pay the rent. So I did a movie for Scuzzo Productions. And I got to do this disgusting commercial wherever I go. I hate to do it to you, but here goes. I ask, is this major religious? Jaws kept you away from the water. But now from Terramont, the movie that just might scare you out of your pants. The Night of the Living Clothes Dryer. A true story based on lies. Starring Siegfried of Chaos. My scheme to take over the United States one laundromat at a time by seizing all the cling free and bounce in the country. <laughs> and using special dryers create massive amounts of static electricity causing national panic when no one can pull their socks apart. <laughs> The Night of the Living Clothes Dry, also stay, starring Mr. Haney as the mayor who refused to close down the town laundromat. I don't care, Mr. and Mrs. Douglas, it's the tourist season. <laughs> Paul Lynn is the crew of Heartless Sheriff. Oh, let him wear wet underwear. <laughs> yes. Rocky and Bullwinkle is the confused tourist. Oh, uh, gee, Rocky, how much bleach do I use? And Tom Snyder is the reporter who died laughing in the face of danger. You know, let's face it, you're pretty damn ugly. <laughs> <laughs> the night of the living clothes dry. Only one thing stood between salvation and complete polyester meltdown. If you dare see this motion picture, you may never wash your clothes again. The night of the living clothes dryer coming soon to a theater near you. No one admit it after the rinse cycle. That's great, an audience that's just as sick as I am. That's terrific. Well, gnarly. <laughs> totally to the max.
You know, Tonto, you're really making me mad now. Thank you, I gotta go. Enjoy the rest of your show. Thank you for laughing. Good night.